Hello, thank you for stopping by. Um, I've got an encouraging word here today uh, to share with you, but I, I wanted to ask the question to start off with, have you ever felt like you've, you've just been left hanging, like hanging on a rope and, you, and you're you afraid if you let go of that rope that you're going to fall and you would crash and burn? Well, that's what this message is, is about today. It's a, a, a word that uh, Perry Stone had shared and I, I've really spoke volumes to me because many times in my life and circumstances and stuff, I have sometimes really felt like I was just left hanging. So he says here, uh, the message is called Time to Let Go. And it is from, like I was saying, Perry Stone. And in the scriptures, he says, there's a lot said about a person who's in a covenant with God, learning how to stand where you're in a battle. One of the verses that comes to mind is Ephesians 6, when Paul said to put on the entire um, uh, of God, the armor of God. And then he says, this verse, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now, I didn't realize that this is doing some research, but uh, that was a Roman military phrase in the Roman time, and this is what it meant. The Roman soldiers are in a battle. It is like going crazy, guys. They are dropping, and they're surrounded by the enemies, and they're fighting. And the leader would say, having done all to stand, keep standing. So he was telling them that after you get the enemies look around and see what's left to take care of, so it was a word of not discouraging them because you'd better look out. This is going to get bad. <clears throat> it was a word to say no matter how intense it gets, keep fighting. So Paul was saying to the church, there to the believers, there at Ephesus. He would. This is a bad city. You're in a rough city. You're in a demonic controlled city. But no matter how rough it gets, don't give up. Now I'm going to read a verse of scripture to you. Psalms 46.10. I looked at this this morning, Perry says. He says, be still and know that I am God. I'm going to ask you a question from the English perspective. If I were to say to you, be still, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Perry says, be silent. That's not what be quiet and stand still. Don't move, okay? So if we read that I have it for, like what he said, for I, what I thought for 46 years, and here again in uh, Hebrew, his friend says it showed him something uh, about this word. He says, I wanted to thank him. But in English, stand still and see the, um, the sound here is what I think of Moses and the Red Sea. I can't go front. And he can't go back. He's not going to go left or right. And God says, what? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Then God then tells him, now take your rod. The secret is in the rod. Don't pray for me to open it. Take what I have given you to open it. Okay, so I'm thinking stand still means okay. I'm and so I'm thinking stand still and it means stand still it comes from the Hebrew word Rafa R-A-F-A in the King James translation of the Bible Rafa or maybe you may pronounce it Rafa is the translated 12 different ways we have a word here that could mean different interpretations based on the context of the scripture the root word, listen to this now, the root word for be still, rafa, means to let, to slack, to slacken, to slack. 
In English, we're, we'd say, let go. Let go and see the salvation of the Lord. Let go, slacken, is a whole lot different than what I have been taught my whole life. My whole life I have been taught, don't do anything, don't make a move, just watch God move. This was my uh, take on it as well. <laughs> so don't make a move, just watch God move. The root word does not mean that. This is why I love doing word studies on individual words in the Old Testament. And it was written in Hebrew portions of Daniel was in Aramaic. In the New Testament, the Cone Greek became, you'll discover that the original word or root word doesn't change what God is saying. It increases your level of what he really is saying. Here's what it literally means. Lose your grip on Lose your grip on it. Watch the salvation of the Lord. So what God was saying in these scriptures was this. If you have a circumstance or a crisis and you're holding on to it, you're trying to figure out what do I do? And this has definitely been me in my life. What's your next move? What do I do? How do I respond? And it's the imagery in the Hebrew is holding on to a rope. And you got it so tight. You're hanging on now. He's not saying let go of the rope and fall. Here's what's God saying. You've got your sit, your opinion, and your way you think it should be done. And you're holding on to it. I can't do anything with what you're doing. I can't do anything with what you're doing. So God says, why don't you loosen up and let go of your grip and give it to me? I'll read this again. So God says, why don't you loosen up? and let go of your grip and give it to me. And what happens is, here's what happens. So when you begin to let go of it, then God can swing you to where he wants you to be. So let go. And God can swing you the way he wants you to go. So if I'm climbing a rope and I've got all the weight on it, I'm only going to keep going as long as I've got my hand on it. But when God says, loosen it up a little bit, then he's moving you and saying, Okay, let's take this rope over here where I need you. So stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Do you see this is the thing? Like as long as we're holding our grip on to something and God wants to really sway us from one, like point A to, to point B, and we're holding on so tight here on this point A, and we're maybe looking over at point B, but we're not really sure how it's going to go. It's very hard sometimes to let go. I've been in this circumstance in my life over and over again. You'd think I'd learn the first time or even the second time, but no, it's taken me a few more turns than that, I will have to say. So he says, yes, yeah, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What in Hebrew means loosen your grip so I can be the one who does something in your situation and I'll get the glory for it. Bottom line, if you try to do it yourself, it, it works. But you'll take the credit because here's what you'll say, boy, you know what I told them? I went to that mortgage department. I told them this and I told them that. Then you start taking the credit yourself. And if there's something that I've learned over the years, says Perry, 
is that God will do what God does for his glory. And if you always are willing to give God the glory, so there's two ways of doing this. You can do all um, the warfare by the flesh or by the spirit. I'm telling you, if I try to do it only by my flesh, it drags out longer. Oh my gosh, yes, I remember it seemed to take forever for me to get to certain places because I wouldn't let go of it. But not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. If somehow I can get this into my head, God, you got to handle this, then God can come back. Come through faster and swifter than your hand, not only holding on to the rope. So I really hope that this speaks to some of you here today. Like if you feel like you're you're grasping at straws or just really just holding so tight onto that rope, thinking that you've got to do it all yourself. Yes, there is a part that we have, you know, in the natural as human beings, there is our part to do certain things in our lives, in our jobs, with our children and families and, and other people around about us. But there are some times when, you know, okay, for instance, when you've done everything you possibly can do, just say here, Lord, okay, I've done my part. Now, please, I'm letting go of it and I'm giving it over to you. You take it, Lord, and I will trust you to work it out in your time. And sometimes maybe a couple of weeks may go by, a couple of months may go by, and you may uh, revisit that again. It's like, okay, God, is there something maybe that I need to do now? And if he shows you, if maybe something presents itself, then you do it. But if not, and it's still an ongoing thing, just continue to hand it over to him. He knows what's best for you. And you know, we're, we're all just learning, you know, to navigate in this world, whether you're a young person or middle-aged or older. We're all, all the time revisiting and trying to understand, okay, what's my part and what's God's part? Because we are partnering with him. So I really hope that you're blessed today. And so, Lord Jesus, I just lift up every person today. And you know who's watched this. I pray, Almighty God, that you'll guide and direct them in your wisdom and your knowledge and in the things that you understand, Lord Jesus, that we don't understand. You're opening our eyes. If our spirits and our mind and our emotions, Lord Jesus, as we partner with you, Lord God, guide and direct us each and every day. We just thank you, Almighty God, in advance for what you will do in and through our lives. And you, God, will get all of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. So God bless you today. And really just trust God with everything in your life because he definitely can be trusted. God bless.